It's the final Group 1 of the Hong Kong racing season. The Standard Chartered Champions and Chater Cup. In its history, it's been won by the likes of River Verdon, Indigenous, Makapura Star, Viva Pataka, Blazing Speed and Werther. And on Sunday, nine horses will be bidding to add their name to that honour roll. fights back and wins for Hong Kong. Pakistan star, he is the shining light of Hong Kong racing and he takes a second group one. Eagle way clear from Exultant, the eagle will land. Glorious Forever fends off his brother. It's like an old backyard stouse between Glorious Forever and Time Warp. Glorious Forever, what a day for Frankie Law. Dark Dream Insatiable, then Ho Ho Card. Dark Dream edging clear, pulls away to win by a length over Insatiable. Time Warp repels the challenge from Werther, and Time Warp will do it again. Yes, it's the 12th and final Group 1 of the Hong Kong racing season. Welcome to this week's edition of HK Direct. And pleased to say I'm joined by Declan Schuster here at Shard Tin. Declan, interesting. Horse won the first Group 1 of the season, was exultant. He's bidding to win the last Group 1. He looks tough to beat on Sunday. He does. He looks very tough to beat. And he's never missed the placings over 2,400 metres as he bids for his third Group 1 of the season. He won the Vars. Most recent run was in the QE2 Cup, which a lot of these horses are coming out of. He's been consistent. He's also won the Hong Kong Gold Cup. But when you focus on his run in the QE2 Cup, he was finishing strongly that day. He closed very nice and he gave every indication that the extra 400 metres on offer on Sunday would be, would be suitable for him. And if, as, as the market suggests, he's going to be very hard to beat. When you look at the QE2 Cup overall, it's the main form race heading into this event. We also had Glorious Forever, Pakistan start involved towards the finish. Outside of Exultant, the way that he was finishing off, he was the best of the locals, Exultant. Was there anything else that caught your eye from that race? Well, Glorious Forever, he was on the rail and he stuck on quite nicely alongside, of course, Pakistan star as well. So it's an interesting race and Glorious Forever is going to be stepping up in distance to 2,400 metres for the first time. So there's a bit of unknown about that, but I think Exultant was clearly the, the run of the race. You just wonder with a horse like Glorious Forever, him and Time Warp both in it, the two brothers, they go hard and fast. You wonder, can they keep that going, the extra 400 metres here? Well, based on Time Warp's run in, in the last race, I would suggest not. But Glorious Forever, if he does push forward, he could make his own luck and he could be there in the finish. Pakistan stars the sort of horse that everyone who follows Hong Kong racing talks about. He's a defending champion. Viva Pataka, over a decade ago, was the last one to win back-to-back. -back. How do you assess his chances? Well, the headgear's come off for the first time, so it's going to be a very interesting Pakistan star. We saw in the trial, it was relaxed, calm, so maybe potentially stepping up over 2,400 metres. Paul O'Sullivan's got him to relax, and he's there in the finish. He ran through the line beautifully, I thought, in that trial. It was very impressive, and he, and he relaxed really nicely, and he extended away with ease. Obviously, this is a different kettle of fish, being a group one on the turf as well and stepping up in distance, but you'd have to be impressed by the trial. You would indeed. Um, when you look at his win in the race last season, it was a smaller field. He did beat Exultan. This might be tougher, though. Exultan's probably better 12 months on. Exultan's probably improved 12 months on, and he's gotten better with, with every race experience, obviously, with the two Group 1s this season as well. But you did have Pakistan Star beat him last, last year, so it does throw up the occasion that maybe Pakistan Star can do it again over, to, over the distance. And something else that's been thrown up in the race is an overseas raid. A happy grin comes over from Japan. We'll get your thoughts on him in a moment, but our Japanese correspondent, Kate Hunter had this to say about his hopes. Hey, it's nice to be back on the program. Um, so, Happy Grin. Uh, he is technically an NAR horse, so unlike most of the other horses that you've seen run in Hong Kong over the past couple of years, uh, he's technically in a completely different racing circuit. Um, but he's been competing uh, quite a lot in the JRA to uh, fairly decent results. He's had a couple of wins um, at the allowance level, um, in the JRA, and he also had a spectacular run in the Japan Cup. I mean, he was seventh and he was kind of far back, but um, it was still a stellar performance if you go back and, and watch him specifically. Um, he'll be coming into the race uh, with an, a, a fantastic fourth place finish in the Nikkei show. So, you know, depending on the level of the Hong Kong contenders he'll be up against, um, it looks like he could have a, a shot to at least be a factor in the race. So I'll be rooting for him because, you know, the, the NAR, they're, they're hard-knocking hard guys. They work real hard, so it'd be, it'd be really awesome 
if they could uh, hit the board or even come home with a trophy. Yes, interesting point there from Kate about him being an NAR horse in Japan. The only other NAR horse we've had compete in Hong Kong was Cosmo Bulk in the 2005 Champions Mile. Declan, you're out of the track. You saw him on Thursday morning. You caught up with the connections, filed a nice story about Happy Grin. What can you pass on to us about him? Yeah, we had a word to both the trainer and jockey on Thursday, and all reports are that his condition's improving every day and he's only getting better and better. And the jockey was very happy with his work on Thursday morning, so I think he's going into this race primed and, and ready to run a big race. And it's interesting as well to note, he's from the North Island, so he regularly travels down to Tokyo, which is on the South Island, which is a long distance. So he's, he's used to travelling, and the trainer mentioned that as well. So it hasn't been a hindrance to him at all. You mentioned his trips to Tokyo. One of those was for the Japan Cup, where he finished seventh, albeit a fair way off the superstar, Armand I, fourth in a Group 2 at his most recent run. Is that form good enough for a Group 1 here in Hong Kong? I think any form out of the Japan Cup probably deserves respect, and especially behind a horse like Armand I, who since came out and won the Group 1 in Dubai. So it's interesting. It's, it's, it's very hard to match the form up, but I think, I think we do have a live contender. Let's talk about a few of the others that we haven't really touched on in the race. Dark Dream, Eagle Way, Queensland Derby winners. Rise High, the comment about him has always been that he'll be better over further. It's just a case of how much further. Mongolian King's the only one coming out of one of the other lead-up races to this here in Hong Kong, the Queen Mother Memorial Cup. But he's a long way off the rest of them in the ratings. Of those... Who would you be giving preference Definitely to? Definitely the two Group 1 Queensland Derby winners. All reports are that Dark Dream's going to be better over 2,400 metres. And especially if this rain, as you can see, with the weather, does stick, he might get, he might get the track that he's after and he could, could be in the finish. And obviously Eagle Way as well. He's a Group 1 winner over the distance, so he as well will be thereabouts. He's a Group 2 winner earlier on this season too, so certainly if he brings his best form, he's with, in with some hope third time competing in the race. We've talked about the nine horses. There's only going to be one winner though. Who's that winner going to be, Declan? I think Exultant's going to be very hard to beat. He showed in the QE2 Cup that he was ready for the step up in distance. I think it's a, it's a welcome rise in distance, and, and he's the one to beat. And the market reflects that as well. Zach Purton chases his first win in this race, so I think he's going to get it. A horse like Pakistan Star, he's a bit of a wild card. We don't know what Pakistan Star is going to do. But with the headgear, I think we're going to see a very different horse, and I'm really interested to see how he settles in the run. So there could be a bit of value about that. And a horse like Happy Grin, I know he was well beaten in the Japan Cup, but all reports are he's working really well and I'm going to be very interested to see him on the day and I think he might throw in a bit of value for the exotics. OK, so exultant to become the first horse then to do the Vars Standard Charter Champions and Chater Cup double in the same season. Promised to be a super day of racing coming up on Sunday. Not just quantity, but quality as well. 11 races on the card. We get things started at 12.30 with the Griffin race where we'll see the exciting Ethereo step out for the second time. The Standard Charter Champions and Chater Cup is at 4.05. It's race eight on the card. Plus, we've also got the Group 3 Chartin Vars to look forward to. And on Saturday, we'll get to see Southern Legend and Singapore Sling represent Hong Kong the Kranji Mile in Singapore. For more information on all of what we've covered in the show today, you can go to the website hkjc.com and also follow us through Twitter. All right, that's all we've got time for on this week's edition of HK Direct. Declan, thanks for your company. Thank you very much for having me. I'm looking forward to Sunday. It just promises to be an enthralling day of racing. Thank you for your company as well on this week's edition of HK Direct. We hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.